Honey and Honeycomb, it is finally in the actual version of Minecraft that you download and play in the launcher. No more snapshots. Super excited to talk about these fancy blocks and items in Minecraft. So let's jump in. So here we are inside of a world, and this is everything that we are going to be talking about today. The honey bottle, the honey block, the honeycomb, and the honeycomb block. If you're wondering, where's that honey? Well, I want some honey. Well, the only way to ever physically hold honey is if it is inside of a bottle or as a block. So there is no actual like honey, like the... Like you couldn't put honey into a bucket or anything like that at the moment. Oh my gosh. Hey, yo Mojang, take that idea and use it. So let's talk about this honey bottle and how do you get it? Well, right here we have a, this is a nest and a hive and either of these, if you click on them with a bottle and they are full, they're dripping. I actually really hate that sound. I really dislike that sound, that drippy, drippy honey sound. Ugh. Blah, blah. Gross. Anyway, uh, right click on it and then that bottle will turn into a honey bottle. You can drink this and it will remove potion effects similar to milk. It's like healing and it will restore three of your full hunger haunches. That's six health or six hunger points. Now, if you already have a honey block, you can put the bottles into the crafting grid and that honey block will go back into the bottles and you'll get four honey bottles as the result. So if somehow you have just the honey blocks, you can turn them back into honey bottles to consume later. If you take this and just put it into the crafting grid, you'll get three sugar as the output and they stack up to 16. Hallelujah, because they didn't use to stack in the earlier snapshots, but by release, they can stack up to 16. You can drink these even if you are full on hunger, basically like milk, where if you're trying to get rid of an effect and you're completely full on hunger, it's not gonna slow you down just because you need a little bit of hunger to eat some food. Moving on to the honey block. Oh my gosh, we got a ton of them here and there is a lot to cover when it comes to the honey block. You craft them in a grid. You can craft this in just your normal player crafting table. You don't have to click a crafting table because you have a two by two crafting table on your player and that will make the honey block and you do get the bottles back. So if you take these, put them in here, you get all of the bottles back that you would have if you, um, you know, you get all your bottles back basically. Now there's a ton of crazy behavioral stuff when it comes to honey blocks. So first we have a zombie here and I'm going to put myself into survival. And as it comes towards me, you'll notice that it avoids all of the honey. So this is a feature of the honey is that mobs will avoid the honey. So you can see he does this really, really weird way to get to me because he does not want to step on that honey at all, which is kind of a cool feature. And I am I think that this is a, like this behavior could be used in some type of grinder to keep mobs flowing in one area, which would be pretty neat. Another thing is that redstone will not travel through it. So honey is a transparent block while slime, which is, has a lot of similarities and still will grab things. You can see how it's grabbing this redstone lamp right here. So slime is considered a solid block and honey is considered a transparent block. They look pretty, they look the same amount of opaque to me, but that is just the behavior of them. So when we have this redstone signal on one side, it will not travel to the other, but it will on a slime block. Speaking of slime blocks, honey blocks have the ability to move entities and items on top of them. So in this situation, we have an armor stand and whenever the honey block is moved, the armor stand moves along with the direction of the piston, but the armor stand that is sitting on the slime will not. Now slime will also sort of bump stuff around. So if we launch this here, you can see that the 
uh, armor stand gets pushed really far. That has no that there's no behavior like that when it comes to the honey block. So you don't expect your honey to be pushing things around. Honey, like slime, can move blocks. So we have some movable blocks up here at the top, including really all of the solid blocks. So dirt and all that stuff can be moved. And then we have some non-movable blo blocks down here. Normally, if it has some type of inventory, it cannot be moved. And then this guy right here is kind of a weird exception. But so that has a same max of 12, just like slime, and they will not connect connect to slime. So you can see that as it is touching the slime right here, it is not pulling it along, which adds a lot of awesome complexity when it comes to all the redstone stuff you can do, having slime and honey being able to independently pull different sets of blocks. That is awesome. Now, if it wasn't obvious, honey will slow people down. So they'll slow players down and they'll slow down mobs and other creatures. So right here, we have a little spawner and it's gonna spawn a zombie and he's gonna try to step on these turtle eggs and you can just see just how slowly he moves as he is walking across that. Also, the player cannot really jump. You can see that as if I come on over here to this corner of a block, eh, eh. Eh, eh, I can't get up. My jumping ability has been diminished by 85%. So I can only jump 15% of what I used to be able to jump at a full height. You know, uh, eh, ah, it's so boring and sad. Also in terms of movement, you can slide down honey blocks by attaching to the side of them. So if we're up here on this crazy honey block tower and I jump off to the side, I can catch the edge almost as if this is some type of vine or a ladder, although I cannot go back up it with vines and ladders. You can kind of crawl up the edge of them. Uh, definitely ladders, obviously you can go straight up. Um, and so honey blocks, you can have that same sort of ability that it will stop your falling. So if you're like really falling fast, you can catch the edge of it and you were in survival, obviously I'm in creative, but you can catch the edge of the slime block to stop from having all that fall damage be applied to you. Speaking of fall damage, honey blocks do reduce fall damage. So right here, I am at 22 blocks above the ground. And so if I fall here, bam, I'm all the way down to half a heart. Right here, this is that same level that we were at before, 22 blocks, but my damage is reduced by 80%. So that fall only takes two hearts of damage where before it was taking nine and a half. That means that the total height, look at how high up in the air we are. The total height that you can fall and land on a honey block is around 100 blocks. So I, there I was just at half a heart. It's pretty impressive to see you, oh my, ah, okay, oh, we're fine, we're fine. So that's actually the exact same amount as hay blocks as well. So I can do the exact same, you can see that the blocks are right next to each other, hitting this hay, I have a half heart damage left as well. So that is a similarity that hay blocks and honey blocks have. And one little fun fact is that if bees happen to be near honey blocks, there is a chance that they will land on top of it and do a little like, and eat the honey that it doesn't actually remove your block, but they will have a little extra little animation of them nomming on that honey. Moving on, let's talk about honeycomb. Wait, before I do, ah, creative mode, nice. Uh, honeycomb can be gathered from either the hives, which is the hive, or the nest, by shearing them. And you get three honeycomb every single time that you shear one of those. So you can see my total is six. What can you do with this honeycomb? Well, in the crafting table, just a four crafting table, the two by two, you can create your honeycomb block. But what I think a lot of people are going to do with this block is make them into hives. So if you use any type of plank on the bottom and the three honeycomb in the middle, then you will create a hive. And this is the man-made version of the nest to have your own bees live in so that you can get a whole bunch more stuff and probably you're going to be getting honey and not honeycomb because honeycomb doesn't really have a lot of uses it's really just a decoration block so you can see this is what it looks like it does have a different sound when you walk on top of it but that's really kind of it has a funky sound when you break and place it down 
Sounds very um, moisture. It so sounds like a lot of moisture. But really, that is it. You cannot eat honeycomb. It doesn't have any special properties. It's really just to put into the larger block size so that you could build with this texture. And that's it. I forgot to mention that honeycomb can be gathered just by your hand. It drops and same thing with honey blocks and they instantly break just like slime does. There's a lot of similarity with slime if you if you catch my drift. There you go, now you know everything there is to know about the new honey block, honeycomb block, honey in a bottle and honeycomb item. Is there any other features? I feel like it's been, what, half a year? And this is kind of the biggest stuff to happen to Minecraft in half a year until the big nether update later on. Do you think that it was worth it? Do you think it was worth the time that we had to wait in order to get this big update? I would love to know your thoughts. Thanks so much for watching this episode of OMG Craft. If you enjoyed it, please give this video a big ol' thumbs up. Also, make sure you subscribe for future videos, tips, tricks, tutorials, and spotlights here on OMG Craft. And I, for one, want that honey, honey in a bucket so I could, I could honey people. Maybe I could stick them there. They move super slow like in lava. That'd be, that's, that's, what, that's the feature that I want. See you next time. Bye.